Okay, we're here the start of developing number one with Jobo CPE 2 developer. This is the result of Richard Childs convincing me that it was a good idea to develop my own film by coming down to my holiday cottage in Scotland and forcing me to do it for myself. A uh, bit nerve wracking at the time, but I'm very glad I did it. Everything came out very well in the end. So, the first thing we've got to do is prior to me starting, I've set up uh, the developer kit by setting, putting all the water in, getting it to roughly about 38 degrees. The thermostat will pick it up correctly at 38 degrees later on so it doesn't have to be accurate. I've got four bottles full of water for washing and I've got three measuring jugs I'm going to use for developer with a fourth measuring jug I tend to use to keep an eye on the temperature uh, and also use it to measure out the stabiliser. Um, the film's already loaded in here um, I've got four sheets of four or five transparencies um, loaded into a reel and I'll show how that's done later on. At the moment it's in the water warming up so that everything is at a nice temperature when the first developer goes in. The temperature is critical for that first development process so we'll have a, we'll have a quick look at what temperature we've got at the moment. Um, I'm doing a double check. I've got 37 on one and 37 on the other, so I need to tweak the temperature up slightly. I'll leave those to warm up for a second while I mix the first batch of chemicals. This, um, this first chemical, this is, this is a Fuji Hunt developer, there are different types of developer, there's, uh, as far as I know, uh, Fuji Hunt chemicals, there are tetanol chemicals, and also Kodak chemicals. Uh, there's three active chemicals really. Um, there's the first developer, which is the one I've already got out. Uh, this doesn't need mixing. This is a just needs diluting with water. So in this one, we use, I've got the jugs marked out, so I don't have to think too much about what I'm measuring. So this first one is. Uh, 50 mil of developer and 200 mil of water. I've calibrated my tap so it's approximately 38 degrees. The second is the colour developer, and the colour developer is in two parts. We get a colour developer A. I don't know if you can see from here, but I've instead of taking the whole of the top off, I've made a tiny hole at one side, just enough to get the liquid out, and a few air holes at the top. And that helped loads when pouring it. So this one's 50ml of the developer A, colour developer. and 50ml of the colour developer B. And this one goes a little fizzy, so it's not the easiest to measure. As you can see, that's starting going fizzy, so it's sometimes difficult to see the line. In this case it didn't go too fizzy at first, so we'll let it off. Uh, this is topped up with 150 millilitres of water. That's got a peculiar blue colour. And we've got the final chemicals which are the bleach fix. Bleach fix is in two parts, just like the colour developer. That's the bleach fix A. And the bleach fix B is a 
peculiar, horrible, magenta, purpley, reddy colour. And then this needs topping up with water again. And they're all top up to 250 millilitres. Now the Fuji handbook and the unit says 270 millilitres, but um, it's just so much easier to work it out for 250 and it doesn't seem to cause a problem. Um, but I'm going to blame Richard Childs if it does. So. So far I've done two and it's worked there. Right, so these have got to stabilise the chemicals, the temperature of all the developers. So we'll have another quick check, see if uh, the thermostat's made any difference. Not a huge amount. So we'll let that warm up a little further. And I'll come back when that's warmed up. Everything should be up to temperature now. Um, so what we need to do is set up a a scheduler. Now people use push button timers. I use a little iPhone app as recommended by Dav Thomas and what it does is it times different sections and gives alerts at the end of each one. So we'll leave that there. We'll check the temperature once more and that's looking good at 38. So We'll take the first developer Pour it in Give it a knock And set off the timer So now you've got six and a half minutes of agitating backs and forwards um, in the meantime, don't worry about it, the first time I looked at this I was standing next to it uh, and when Richard dragged me away from it I was sitting on the couch checking the watch every few seconds and as soon as the time goes I pounced back and grabbed the developer. As it is, if you go over by 10 seconds on a six and a half minutes exposure um, it means you're going to slightly overdevelop which should add about a tenth of a stop of overexposure to your picture. In other words, don't worry about it. What I'm going to do is go get a coffee.